Okay, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to our listeners. Uh, well, thanks for having me. My name is Dan Bongino, a candidate for U.S. Senate here in Maryland. And you've got a busy weekend planned here in Western Maryland. What all are you doing? Yes, ma'am, we do. We're headed out to the Autumn Glory Festival today, and then we'll be speaking to the Allegheny Tea Party Patriots tomorrow. So we're happy to be out here. And uh, the campaign is going well so far? Very well. We're ecstatic with the position we're in right now. We are really happy. So a couple of big topics, of course, going on right now is the Occupy Wall Street. How do you feel about that? Yeah, what are they protesting? What do you think about it? It's odd that they're protesting most of them. I don't want to say all of them because some of them have a legitimate gripe. We've had some serious economic issues. You know, these these are our kids. I mean, they're young kids. You know, agree or disagree with their ideas, they're our kids. And some of them legitimately don't have jobs and are wondering where the economy is. But what are they protesting against? It's odd that they're most of them are protesting for a bigger government expansion. I've actually heard one of them defend the jobs bill, and I thought that was odd. Um, some of them are anarchists or are protesting against a bigger government, and then others are protesting for a bigger government. And then you get the anti, the, the anti-corporation crowd. So you're willing to trade the concentrated power of a corporation, which, keep in mind, you don't have to buy any of their products at all. You know, if you don't like a big oil company, then just go buy another oil company's products. If you don't like Apple's products, they're a big corporation, then go buy a PC, right? But they're willing to trade that, that concentrated power they can get away from from a concentrated power you can never get away from, a bigger government. You have no choice. What, are you going to choose government B? That's it. There's government A and that's it. So that's just odd that it's a group of anarchists who are fighting for bigger government. Again, some of them, not all of them. I just find that an odd trade you'd want to make. It sacrifices all your personal freedoms. So. At the core of the issue is jobs. Sure. And Obama just released his jobs plan, right? right. How do you feel about that? Well, I, I won't call it a jobs plan ever. It's a tax plan. That's all it is. It's semantics. There's no jobs in that plan. It's going to reduce itemized deductions for people making $200,000 a year or less. Now, that, those are small business owners. Now, I say to people all the time, if I guaranteed you that this increase in taxes on the so-called rich, who keep in mind are really small business owners, was going to cost you and your neighbor your job, would you still do it? That's all it is. I mean, when you think about it, what is it doing? If you had three people in a room, person A, person B, and person government, person government takes money, a dollar, from person A. Now, there's a bureaucratic cost associated with taking that dollar. It costs money, IRS agents, collection agents. So he only gets about 85 cents. He then takes that 85 cents and gives it to person B. Now, when he gives it to him, there's more bureaucratic costs. So now it's only 60 cents. How did taking a dollar from one person and giving 60 cents to the other grow a job? It doesn't make any sense. Man, that's never worked. It's been tried before. It has failed every single time. Time. Again, I'm not, a, you know, I'm not a rich man. I'm a middle class guy. I was a Secret Service agent. I live in a very small house in Severna Park. I'm not rich. This doesn't benefit me. I just want to do what works, not what sounds good. There's a difference. So what works? What's the fix? How do we get more jobs? Well, we have to get more money, not out of the pockets of our citizens, but into the pockets of our citizens. How do we do that? And, and I want to caveat this because I'm not an anti-government guy. And no one I know in the Republican Party is. I'm pro-military, pro-police, pro-fire, pro-good teachers. I mean, that's not an anti-government position. I just am arguing for smaller, efficient, effective government. How do we do that? We decrease, we flatten and broaden by decreasing our tax rate, flattening and broadening across the board. Everybody's got to buy it. If government's worth it, everybody's got to pay it. And when I'm talking about everybody, I'm not talking about taxing the rich and, and not, I'm talking about everyone. Now, I'm not for, uh, I'm not for saying that, you know, Poor people should pay the same amount, uh, you know, as rich folks. Maybe there should be a certain degree of progressivity, but everybody's got to buy in. You can't argue for government on the left and then say, "But I don't want to pay." It's only good when the other when the other guy pays. That makes no sense. That argument makes no sense. You don't walk into an Apple store and buy an iPad and say the other guy's paying. So if you want bigger government on the left, then everybody's got to be willing to buy in. But having said that, we need reasonable tax rates. Our tax rates are excessive, and the president's arguing for more in this bill and saying that if I somehow take more money from people, again, and give it to person B, it's going to create jobs, it doesn't make any sense. It's been tried. It's failed every single time. There are also bills moving through right now about trade